Hi, this is Yvonne Prin, and I would like to share with you how to create simplified, resizable maps. Even in these days of GPS, MapQuest, and all these wonderful tools, a printed map is still an absolutely fantastic tool if you really want people to connect with events in your church. Just a quick reminder of the importance of business and invitation cards, which are one of the tools that you'll most often want to put a map on. These are really essential little tools for PR and outreach. You see, the people attending your church, they're all your satisfied customers. They love your church. They want to attend. They want to tell their friends. And a business and invitation card is a great connecting tool to give to them. No matter what style you you do for your cards, whether it's a fold over, a more complex one, whatever it is, a map can be absolutely essential for success. But the question for so many people is, how do I do a map like this one? Because what most people are familiar with today is something like Google Maps. Now, Google Maps or the maps from MapQuest, they're absolutely wonderful, but they're not that helpful for a church or business card because something like this, if you try to put it on a card, it doesn't work out really very well. So what to do about that? One of the easiest things you can do is to create your own and we're going to go into Microsoft Publisher and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, here we are in Microsoft Publisher. Now, as you can see, I have imported a Google Map onto this. I used Snagit to capture the image. Any kind of screen capture program can do that. And I have it on the back of a blank business card. Now there's a lot of problems with this. You see if you shrink it down so you can put some other printing on the page, you can't read any of the writing. And one of the problems too, even if say you wanted to use the whole back of a card, which would be kind of a waste of space, there's way too much information. You don't need all of this information. Now this is actually a map for how to get to, to my church, uh, Coastline Bible Church in Ventura, California. And one other thing that's kind of funny about this Google map, this I just pulled it right off the web, is see this big blank area over here? That's Pacific View Mall. That's one of the biggest landmarks in the whole area. And for some reason, Google left it off there. Who You know, who knows? So this map, even if I used it, would be a little bit confusing. Well, what do we do? Now, I've done a lot of this ahead, so you don't just have to see me do very simple tasks, but let's just go through it. What you can do if you have something like Google Maps is you can actually use them as a template to trace the key streets. And here I did that. I just, um, and you don't have to follow it exactly. People just need to know the key streets. Even if you don't put in something like this, just you know, put in the main streets. I'm going to actually get rid of the Google map, but you can see you just have your basic outline of the streets here. Now then, um, what you can do, just go ahead and finish it off. Um, what I've done here is I've just added the different street names. I put in boxes for the main uh, landmarks, the Pacific View Mall. Here's our church, and then you can kind of tidy it up and um, you know, put, make your lines work out. Let me show you the one thing that I did on the text that I think is, is kind of important. Let's go ahead and select a text block. And I didn't put in the exit off of the 126 freeway, so I'm going to put 126 exit to Main Street. Now, what I strongly recommend when you're doing maps, also for charts and things like that, is that you use Arial Narrow as a font. Arial Narrow is a condensed uh, typeface. It, um, it's very, very clear, very easy to read, and it really works quite well. Now, in addition to using that, I'm going to also shrink it down to, let's do it at about six points, whoops, would help if I selected it, to um, six points, and I'm going to make it bold. And then one other thing that you, you want to do is before you place your text, you want to go in under Arrange, 
and then go down to text wrapping and select none. The reason you want to do that is you don't want your text to bump anything off or, um, you know, just do kind of funny things. And if you don't do that, it, it can get kind of messy. Now, we want to move it down to this line. But as you can see, this line is tilted. And to make it go along with that, all you do is you go up here to your little free rotate button. And we want to select that hit the little come on sometimes it doesn't always do it right away you want to select this little corner now a little trick to make it line up exactly with the line is see where there's the dotted line just make your box line up with that and then your map will be exactly on the same angle and then just move it down there and that's all there is to that now um, we have our little map, and now some of you are thinking, well, that's very nice, but uh, Yvonne, it's still, I mean, how do we resize it? Because you all know that if you just select the whole thing and group it, if we go to resize this, we've, we selected all of it, and then we just hit the little group command, and then if we do that, and we try to resize it, well, it just becomes a big mess. So that doesn't solve anything. Let's undo that. Well. What's the solution? Well, many of you who have watched my other video on how to create images with Publisher, you know what to do. And it's it's just so cool. What you do is you simply save it, save this publication, not as a publisher file, but you continue down on your list and you save it as a JPEG. You could also save it as a PNG, but I just like JPEGs. And so uh, the other thing that I would recommend is here on the resolution, you could keep it at 150, but I have found that for reprinting and things like that, if you go ahead and do it up to 300 uh, DPI, you get a very sharp, clear image. Hit OK, save. And I'm not going to replace it. I already have that done. And that's all there is to that. Now, we'll just go ahead and go. Um, uh, well, this is all done. We'll go ahead and go to the final page. And now you can see what I've done is I have imported this. This is now a graphic. And I just want to show you the big difference that it makes between this and the MapQuest one. Again, uh, I mean, the Google one. Again, for this, we can just shrink it down. And you see it's, it's kind of useless. Now, here we have our saved graphic that um, from Publisher. Now, we, we have a lot of this extra white space. And we probably want to get rid of that. So all we have to do is we select it and then go over here and you select your cropping tool go ahead and just crop it down get rid of that white space yeah, I won't worry about that and then now just uh, now we have our sizable graphic and see now, instead of just a funny little map that you can't see, we have a resizable graphic that you can use in any of your publications. You can use it any size you want. You can put it on the web. You can put it in brochures, whatever. You have a wonderful little map that's very useful for you. And that's all there is to that. Now, I'm going to go back to our PowerPoint presentation because I have a couple other little things that I want um, to tell you. Let's go ahead and start back up from this slide. So um, next on, uh, I do have a few more things for those of you that are members on this site that I really want you to look at on business and invitation cards. To find them all, you just go to Effective Church Communications, you go to the Core Communications, and then under that tab, church invitation cards now not church connection cards it's church invitation cards i have three videos for you the overall video on church and invitation cards i have one on how to create um, a ministry invitation card for a men's ministry this goes through how to do it in publisher and then this is a little um, video on how to create a logo using logo smarts it's a wonderful little program it's only 39 dollars and as um you know i don't take any affiliate or marketing things or advertising through for my website i just tell you about stuff that i really like and i love this little program 
I also have two books for you, an overall one on business and invitation cards, um, one why church newspaper ads don't work and an alternative that does, and then one more thing for members that is really, really neat, I think, and this is a whole file of templates and JPEG files uh, for you to personalize for your church on business and invitation cards. I have three for churches that you could go ahead and just put in your church name. These are all in Microsoft Publisher. And then I have three that are just miscellaneous ones, actually two of them for women's ministries, one for a children's ministry. All of the um, artwork is is copyright okay, um, and they're all things that I created, and so they're free for members to use and personalize. And then finally, just a few last little words. Church invitation and business cards are just a wonderful low-tech way to connect with other resources. You might have the greatest website in the world, but if people don't know how to get to it, they can't read anything on it. A business card is a great way to do that. They're also a wonderful way to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. You are equipping your people to share with their friends. And remember, too, that our Lord delights in using little things. Um, he called the fishermen and he said, you know, just take your little net and put it away and I'm going to make you into a fisher of men. He took little things, little skills, things that we maybe might not think a whole lot of, and he uses them for our joy and his glory. So may the Lord greatly bless you as you create and use business communication cards for your church and ministries. <music>